So this is the first in a new series of videos that are going to look at Bonzo's drumming on each studio album. So today I'm going to look at his drumming and the contributions that he made to the music on the first album. Now the first album to me is really special because it's the first time that the world heard John Bonham's incredibly unique and soulful drumming and right out of the gate from the very first uh, opening bars of Good Times, Bad Times, when you hear that, you know that this is a very special drummer. Uh, first of all, the beat that he came up with for the song, I think, is absolutely unique. And keep in mind, he was only 20 years old when they recorded this album in uh, October of 1968. My opinion is that he used a Slingerland kit in the beginning from September 68 until the first US tour which was late December of 68. Uh, there are photographs of him playing the Slingerland kit and it looks to be a 22-13-16. I tend to think that's what he played in the studio uh, for the recording of the first album. Um, there's no evidence that he would have played a Ludwig kit, there's no photographs, I mean maybe he had a Ludwig kit, um, again no evidence of that, no photographs from the session, so we don't know. We just know that based on the sound, the, the, the drums sound different of course than they would later um, once he got his Maple Thermogloss kit. They do sound smaller even though he has a beautiful sound on the drums and a big sound and they're also tuned up a little um, higher than we're used to hearing on the later studio albums. So um, I'm going to do some demos of each song and I also want to talk about what makes his beat or his part distinctive because right from the outset Bonzo had a very special way of playing along with the phrases of the song, with the melody or with the uh, rhythms, you know, the riffs that uh, Jimmy and John Paul came up with. So, for example, on Good Times, Bad Times, um, he plays this beat that follows along with the line, with a lot of interaction between snare drum, bass drum, uh, playing across the toms, and a cowbell beat. Now, what I would like to do is play an example of what another drummer, like a, a more typical rock drum part, would sound like, sort of theorize or hypothesize about what another drummer who played more conventionally might play on it and then I'll demonstrate Bonzo's part and just look at what makes that so unique and special. Okay, so first things first is the tuning. Um, the toms are tuned up a bit higher, especially than mine are right now, so I'm going to go ahead and bring these up just a little bit just for the purpose of emulating the sound a little closer. I don't have a kit that's 22, 13, 16 and I had this kit set up, I was doing some other recording and I figured I'll just do the demonstrations on on the new Legacy kit and then when we get into the later albums I'll use my Thermal Gloss kit for the second and third album and then probably bring these bad boys back for the fourth album and, and so on. So um, here's where it's pitched right now. Now I'm gonna just bring it up a little, going about a quarter turn or so. I'm not going to touch the bottom, only raise the top. I think that's more like it. And now the floor tom. pitch the tom and floor tom about a perfect fourth apart. That's pretty close. Doesn't have to be super specific. So, um, and the snare drum he was using was most likely 
on the first album, it was uh, it was either of what you see in photographs early on. It was either a Ludwig uh, LM400 Superphonic 5-inch, um, which you can see in the pictures from the Scandinavian tour, or it could be a Slingerland, what looks like a uh, probably a chrome over brass slingerland. I don't know if it was five or five and a half. Not a deep drum. But you can see him playing that drum when he had that black diamond pearl Ludwig kit in the early weeks of the very first U.S. tour. So he is not playing a slingerland. I'm uh, um, sorry, he is not playing a Ludwig snare drum on the opening of the U.S. tour. He's got a what looks like a maybe a Radio King or a Gene Krupa model uh, chrome slingerland drum. So when I think of good times, bad times, I think about that riff and how brilliantly Bonzo plays along with that kind of intervallic, you know, jumping riff. Right now, if I think, how would another drummer play it? I'm not going to name any names. I'm just thinking like a conventional rock drummer who's playing a rock beat. Um, and this is just a totally blind attempt. Um, I've actually never done this. But I'm going to just attempt to play good times, bad times, on Bonham like And then play it the way Bonham did, and we can look at what makes it so special. So let's see. It sounds fine, right? It sounds like a decent sort of funky rock beat from the late 60s. Now, what makes Bonham's contribution to this so special? Well, he's truly thinking and feeling in terms of a it's a very musical sensibility, not just as a drummer, but as a musician. He's hearing these bass lines and the guitar part, and he wants to complement it in a way that gives it a lot of support and just really blends or meshes well with, with the riffs. So instead of just playing which would be totally reasonable for This video is going to a place I don't want to go. I don't want to sing for you. Anyway, I digress. So here's Bonham's part. Now check out how much cooler this is, right? Okay, so we're all well familiar with that. Um, so what's happening there is the bass drum and the snare are playing a lot of those rhythms that the riff, um, you know, indicates, the rhythm of the riff. The cowbell is playing not just straight eighth notes, but he's playing these sort of um, Latin jazz-like rhythms.
So that in itself is pretty distinctive, uh, a distinctive addition to the song. If nothing else, if he just went... That would be a cool beat. But now we've got this... You know, that's a really cool way to interpret that line um, in the second verse, I guess it is. Sixteen, I fell in love with a girl as sweet as can be. He's playing this line now. I mean, who does that? I, I, that's such a, a, an individualized way of hearing the beat. And it's still really grooving. It's kind of busy, but for being busy, it's really, really grooving. So, Good Times, Bad Times, I mean, that's just such an iconic beat of his, and it's the very first one that people heard when they heard Led Zeppelin. I just think that's, that's amazing, you know, to me. That's like genius level. 20 years old and came up with that incredible beat. And then, you know, last but certainly not least, playing the triplets with the first note rest of each triplet with his foot, which we're all familiar with. We can talk about that for a long time. I'm not going to go into too much on that now because everyone's well familiar with Bonzo's right foot abilities. So next up, let's look at the next tune, which is Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You. Okay, so Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You, it's a little hard to distinguish what he was playing on the studio recording. Um, in the footage that exists from Denmark television special. I think that was um, March of 1969. Uh, you can clearly see what he's playing and to me it sounds a bit different than what what you hear on the studio version. Um, the studio version to me sounds like it's all on the snare but it is hard to tell if he's maybe hitting Tom and snare together and um, I'll give a demonstration of that, but what it sounds like on the recording to me is this. It sounds something like that, but when you see Bonzo play it on the Denmark's TV special, he plays this. And that could be what he was playing in the studio, it's just you're not hearing those toms as clearly. And one of the reasons I think for that um, is there's timpani on the studio version. Um, you can hear the, the timpani very faintly, but it's in there if you put on headphones and have a good quality source recording. You can hear the... could obscure this where you're only hearing you know hearing that sound of just the snare and I also don't know if he does a double stroke kind of like a rough <coughs> excuse me uh, which is what I do and it looks like in the video if you really slow down that video it does look like he's going Slowly that's okay, and it could also be which is left, right, left, right. But I don't think that's what it is. It could also just be simple, simpler, this. Maybe that's it. You can also see clearly on the uh, Danish TV, his bass drum is playing all of those eighth notes. Um, okay, and then the, the rest of the tune is just basically 
again, Bonzo playing the lick, uh, accentuating the lick with the way he plays the beat, which is this. Now, whether or not he's always going or going, it doesn't really matter. Um, it looks like he often plays that double skip with the right foot when you see the footage from the side. Okay, so the next tune is You Shook Me, and You Shook Me is a Willie Dixon blues, just a classic straight up blues, slow blues, and it's a slow shuffle, but again, Bonzo doesn't play this like a conventional drummer would play a slow blues or a blues shuffle at this tempo. So you've got... Da, 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 da. Right? That's basically the beat. Um, so what I'm doing, and what I think he most likely did, is playing very soft ghost notes on the shuffle with the bass drum, accenting rim shots on two and four. So like this. Just go. That's fine, but to me, you get that extra, you know, sizzle. You get that extra grease when you've got the ghost notes in there. If if someone were to count this tune off and I had never played it before or never heard Bonzo play it, um, I would likely play it like this. That's a more conventional way to play a triplet blues, 12-8 um, blues like that. But Bonzo chooses this beat, and I'm sure there's a precedent for it. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but I know I've heard other blues drummers, guys like, you know, a name comes to mind, a guy who used to live here, S.P. Leary, played with many great blues artists, um, Muddy Waters, of course, and Otis Spann. And S.P. was on a lot of recordings, Willie Dixon. And I used to see SP play sometimes at a club here in town, and he would play brushes beautifully playing the blues and had a super nice pocket. Um, and I think I've seen him play like... So that's, that's the bottom way of playing this tune. Otherwise, other things about this tune that are noteworthy are during the, uh, the solos. There's a break. Bum, bum, bum. And he plays this, you know. Which is just, of course, left, right, left, right, with two bass drum strokes in between. And then the next one is... Okay, that's You Shook Me. Let's move on to the next track. And of course, that's Dazed and Confused, which is altogether iconic. Again, on this one, you know, Bonham's distinctive style is, in, is definitely on full view, but the beat itself isn't um, anything that unique. It's mostly, you know... However, the fills that he plays, um, while they're not innovative fills, they're very distinctive to his sound and style, and he would use them throughout his, his whole career. And that's namely this one, you know.
other one. And also. And we've got this part um, played on the floor tom and snare and tom tom and snare as he answers the da 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 da. And then we get into the into the um, next section, which is the fast guitar solo, which is played like this. interesting thing he does on the studio version he's kind of playing around with these um, the feeling of the triplet and uh, I'll, I'll just demonstrate what I mean it's this that kind of thing so at the fast tempo it gives it a really nice little funkiness so the grand finale of the guitar solo back into the 12-8. So. Right, so that's just simply left, right, foot, triplets, alternating. Now the time change. So that's basically the song. Um, let's move on to the next one. Okay, your time is gonna come. I love this tune. It's uh, somewhat of a, I don't want to say obscure, but it's kind of a deeper cut. And I really love it because it's an original Zeppelin song and it has a feeling of like an older, um, well, at least for the time, you know, contemporary to the time, but like an old fashioned soul kind of tune with the Hammond B3 and the feeling of the lyric and the just the whole vibe of it. It's it, it shows Zeppelin's, I guess, diverse taste. I mean, this album already has all of these different elements, the Spanish guitar element in Babe, I'm Gonna Leave You, the gut bucket deep blues of You Shook Me and I Can't Quit You, Babe, um, straight up, you know, pile driving rock and roll on, on communication breakdown. And then you have this, which starts with this almost like church-like hymn by John Paul Jones. That's a beautiful improvisation, somewhat along the lines of what he would do in Thank You, but you know, thematically it's different. But a similar idea, just like setting the mood with this beautiful hymnal sounding organ thing. And then when they come in, when he sets up the tempo, Bonzo comes in with that crash, and who knows what symbol it is. It's probably a Zildjian. Maybe it's a giant beat, but I kind of doubt it. Anyway, when he comes in, the groove is just so solid and locked in, 
and it's sort of a common groove. It's not really, I mean, it's basically a common groove. There's, there's nothing that unique like good times, bad times about it, but, um, but it's just so in the pocket. So let's, let's look at, at that when, when the drums come in. Okay, so basically straightforward beat like that, and as it goes on, he starts to add um, a bunch of big fills. Next up is Black Mountain Side, which Bonzo does not play on. Um, he played on it live. Of course, he used mallets and played along with Jimmy's solo on um, White Summer, Black Mountain Side. Um, but yeah, that leads directly into Communication Breakdown. So Communication Breakdown, Bonzo plays this beat that again uh, reflects the riff, so the riff is da 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 ah 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 da 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 ah ah ah, and Bonzo catches those, you know. Basically that's it and um, you know he might play a flam sometimes I think he doesn't play a flam when he comes back to the and I think he often hits the the ride before the crash now I don't know but uh, again theorizing on what another drummer might play you know, I, I think the more conventional thing to do would just be to keep the two and four going and not catch those hits each time, like this. But it's much more interesting and cool the way Bonzo plays it, catching those hits. Okay, so I Can't Quit You is again a 12-8 blues, uh, played a little bit more conventionally this time, but with the addition of Bonzo's incredible right footwork. So this song features some really cool little foot bits in there, and I'll just basically demonstrate the beat and then also throw in a bit of that. So we've got... Oh, I can't quit you, baby. You know, you can play that single strokes, or you can do what I do, which is double. And when I really listen closely to that, it sounds to me like Bonzo's playing double, double strokes instead of single strokes on that little phrase. I'll, I'll demonstrate. That's with singles. So that's... doubles, it's like this. 
So that's left, right, right, left, left. There's five, five notes. There's something about that that swings a little bit more. Check it out. See, the single strokes, you can make them swing, but with the double strokes, it gives it like that extra bounciness. So I kind of think he did that. Then you got the footwork stuff. I need to work on that one. Been a while. Yeah. So again, really great distinctive drumming, taking the form of a 12-8 blues and a conventional blues beat and adding all these little bits of personality to it with the, uh, you know, the ghost notes. Those little bits, uh, the way he plays those fills in between the breaks. And the nice roll back to the hi-hat. So that's I Can't Quit You Baby. So how many more times? Okay, so that is basically a jazz beat that you would commonly hear on like a, uh, an organ record. You know, like one of the great organ players like Jimmy Smith or Jack McDuff. Make sure this camera's on, yes. Um, and that's basically called a conga beat when you emulate what the conga player uh, would often play on those soul jazz, you know, recordings for lack of a better term, but you know, like classic organ group recordings where you where you hear the, the conga player playing. So that's basically emulating it on the drum set without a conga player. Okay. So that walking bass line that Jones plays, Bonzo is basically just playing a jazz ride cymbal, emulating this, uh, doing the conga kind of thing because it sounds groovy. And um, then you have the crashes interspersed in there with the, with the guitar, you know. Like Now from there, it leads into the pile driving, you know, riff. So that's um, his fav one of his favorite fills. There's that triplet fill again. And then it's just a bash out with the backbeat. So 
that he's throwing in there, it's almost like a call and response with each bar. Um, I think this is one of them. So that leads up to the Bex Bolero part, which is the triplets on the snare, floor tom, and uh, that build up like this. And then the snare's off. And so forth, um, snares off, playing across the toms, uh, creating this atmosphere under the the bowed guitar, <coughs> uh, which then leads back to the build up, the the triplet build up, and that leads to the hunter section, which um, is something like you know. This is a unique Bonzo moment again on the first album. What I think another drummer might have done is simply play along with that beat, just play a groove with it like this. Almost like a, uh, I don't know, Foxy Lady or Purple Haze or something, you know. But no, what Bonzo does is he plays it almost like a street beat, kind of like a New Orleans type of funk street beat groove. So he's playing on the snare, he's playing. And it also has a little bit of swing to it, it's not real. got a little more bounce to it than that. So there's, a, there's a flam tap in there, basically, that's what that is. So that's a flam and then a tap. and a ghost um, drag with the left hand to start that phrase off. You can also roll like a five stroke roll. That at tempo, that five stroke roll, it's not quite so clinical, it's, it's more like a buzz, you know. Now, um, one thing I should say is, when he played this live, he changed it up a little bit, it, ev it evolved like a lot of his drum parts, and I, I think it was something like this. gets that bass drum involved like on Royal Albert Hall where it's it's almost like the Bonham engine.
Okay, so then that brings us to the end of the tune, which is just back to the out chorus, and then he plays these really great, um, a few drum fills to end the song, and I'll just kind of play through that section. So that's it. That's the first album in a very quick nutshell breakdown. Um, I hope you enjoy this video and I'm really looking forward to doing the upcoming albums and looking uh, more closely at what made Bonzo such a special drummer and his contribution to Led Zeppelin's music.